Elba Caro's life has changed forever. Hurricane Maria swept away practically everything she had. Her house is a ruin. Her fellow residents in Salinas have likewise been left largely to their own devices. It's here in the south of Puerto Rico that the hurricane hit hardest. But Elba is determined to keep her spirits up, and she's already looking toward the future. The first thing that Elba does after she gets up is to check that she has enough diesel fuel for the day. This generator is her sole source of electricity, and it's vital for pumping water up to the second story. Elba's house is right by the sea. The view is spectacular, until recently. The house is in an upscale neighborhood, but the stylish motorboats that used to adorn the Bay of Playita were hit just as hard as the fancy beach houses. Elba faces an ongoing battle against the water pouring into her home through the roof. We have to get rid of the water so that everything can dry out. Elba tries to rescue the parquet floor by pushing the water through the cracks. It's going down. I've rebuilt my room, so at least I don't have to sleep on the balcony anymore. <laughs> Elba takes another look around the living room to see what else has gotten wet. She's stored all the possessions that she managed to salvage in the living room. It's one of the few rooms that are secure thanks to the concrete walls. The other rooms were built with elegant looking wood. Elba inherited the house from her parents. She spent the happiest years of her life growing up here. The damage to the house amounts to several hundred thousand dollars. Elba is from a well-to-do family, but most of that wealth has been destroyed by the hurricane. Here, the wooden floor has buckled. The house had survived a series of hurricanes over decades, but Maria was just too strong. The lower section of the house is made from concrete as protection against flooding. Some of Elba's relatives have come by today to help out. This is now the makeshift kitchen and living room. This hammock is now where Elba's brother, Ramon, sleeps. He's recently divorced, and he's coping with the devastation in his own way. He's using a car battery to power up his music stereo, which will hopefully lighten the mood. Anna had not seen her cousin Elba since the disaster. She lost her mother in the aftermath of the hurricane. My mother died. We've suffered genuine losses in addition to material damage. My mother is the person I loved more than anything. I have to believe she's in a better place now and that we have to survive. This is not life right now. It's about just staying alive. We have to look to the future. Life must go on. How did your mother die? It was a natural death, but they can't say for sure because the hospital has been crippled by the power outages. Anna parked right in front of the destroyed facade and she's shocked by what she sees. I'm lost for words. The facade is gone. This house belonged to my father's twin brother. They loved each other very much. It's as if after losing them, we've now lost our memories of them. 
But the most important thing is to stick together and stay strong. And that applies to the rest of the population of Salinas, indeed all residents of Puerto Rico. There are lines everywhere, especially outside banks. The power failures mean credit cards, normally a popular method of payment, cannot currently be accepted. Cash is now the only option, and banks cannot cope with the demand. Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens, but aid from Washington has been slow to arrive. Elba finally returns from her shopping expedition, which was, as she reports, chaotic. It's difficult to find food. The queues are horrendous. Plus, we went to three banks, but none of them had any cash. Look here, we took whatever was available. Her priority when shopping is items for the immediate future, not luxury goods. Elba bought mostly non-perishable canned food. There's practically no fresh produce on sale, and the supermarket's refrigerators and freezers have no power. Elba managed to buy some diesel fuel to get the generator up and running again. Her cousin does what she can to help. Oh, God, it's rained so much today. Annie, are you in the bathroom? That's where I hid. All of us, all four dogs, Ramon and Coqui. We were all here in the bathroom. Then I was alone with the dogs for over 10 hours. I didn't know whether to sing or pray. By the time I came out, I didn't know what day it was or what the time was. It took me five days to return to reality. I couldn't sleep, although I tried. I also used it as a wardrobe. This was my shelter from the hurricane. The noise started at 4.30 in the morning. It was really loud. All I could do was scream. I thought the house was going to collapse on me. And Ramon said, run, take the dogs. And then we all came inside here. You knew what was going to happen. Yes, I thought the entire house was going to fall down. Eventually, I wanted to see what was going on outside. I climbed here, took a look, and, and bam, a piece of metal smashed against this window. But the glass didn't break. I just stood there. It was a whole section of the roof. What you can see down there is clean now. It was a total mess. At the neighbor's place too, everywhere. Have you been in mom and dad's room yet? I can't do it. You haven't seen it? Come with me, you'll need a drink. Elba shows her cousin around the wooden section of her home. Her brother Ramon had been living in what used to be her parents' room. Take a look. No, I can't. Go on, you have to, to understand.
It's all gone. The angels are still up. So is the picture of the saints above the bed where Dad died. The family scattered her father's ashes into the sea. What was it like when she came out of her shelter and saw the ruins? I immediately noticed that the winds were still really strong. I thought, oh my God, when is it finally going to end? And when I turned around and saw the house, well, what can I say? I told myself that everything could be replaced. There's no more I can do here now. Elba was scared for her life while she was hiding from the storm, but she also had time to reflect about how to move on. Elba has a dream of having a brand new home here a year from now. My future? I don't know. Tomorrow, after I have a cup of coffee, I'm going to start thinking about where I want to have my new kitchen. And then I'll be able to start working on it, once the old one has gone. Big things have small beginnings. For people like Elba, there is only a new beginning.